Hi there, fourth graders. Um, today we are going to be starting with our unit on addition and subtraction of whole numbers. Now, just so you know, addition and subtraction of whole numbers in fourth grade is very similar to the addition and subtraction that you guys have been doing up to this point. So we're basically just working with bigger numbers. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna go over today some different estimation strategies that you can use. Your first couple of lessons are all about mental math and estimation. And so today that's what we're gonna be focusing on. Now, just so you know, because I've had some people ask me, well, what's the point of estimating? Why don't I just find the answer? And that's a valid question. Sometimes I can get frustrated with estimating too. And I'm just like, oh, I know how to add, just let me add. Or I know how to subtract, just let me subtract. But here's the thing. Sometimes you don't have to know the exact answer. Sometimes all you need is an estimate. And even in real life situations, remember we're learning math because math relates to our real life. In real life situations, there are plenty of times where you don't actually have to know the real answer. For example, if you're at the grocery store and you want to make sure you have, you know, $20 in cash and you're buying some food to make your lunch, um, you want to make sure you have enough money when you get to the cash register, right? But you don't necessarily need to go, well, you know, my loaf of bread is $3.49 plus the lunch meat is um, $5.69 or whatever. You can estimate. You can say the loaf of bread is about $2.50. The lunch meat is about six dollars you know and and estimate and add in your head um and so that's a really valid strategy another situation where we may use estimation would be in creating a budget something you're probably not doing as a fourth grader but it is something that you will be doing later in your life when you're when you're working at a job and you're making income and you have expenses that you need to pay you estimate what those expenses are and sometimes depending on what type of a job you have if you're working and you receive an hourly pay you would maybe be estimating about how much income you would be getting as well so that you are able to make sure that you have enough money to pay for the things that you need and then maybe it's some leftover to pay for the things that you want and things like that okay so that's that's just a couple of different examples of where we would be using estimating. Mental math strategies are also really great because um, I, hear, I have students all the time who want to do all their math in their head, and that's fantastic. But when we're working with really big numbers, that can get challenging, and I see a lot of students making mistakes. So when you have mental math strategies, um, that makes that a little bit easier. And one more thing I just wanted to point out before we go over a few things with estimation is, you know, there are a lot of different ways to find answers in math. You know, sometimes we get stuck in thinking, well, this is the only way that I can do this problem. And the reality is that's just not true. I was watching my son who's going into third grade um, do some math over the summer and he was subtracting and he wasn't regrouping in a traditional way and doing it. And, and I was like, buddy, what are you doing? And he explained to me what he was doing and he got every single answer correct. But I've never seen anybody subtract that way. And I'm like, Wow, that's amazing. You know, there's so many different ways that we can add. And there's so many different ways that we can subtract and multiply and divide. And in the end, you pick the way that works for you. That's how his brain works. I mean, I wouldn't choose to do it that way because that's not how my brain works. But that's how he chose to do it. And if you're getting it right most of the time, go for it, okay? It's not like this is the right way to do the problem. This is the wrong way to do the problem. So that's why you see a lot of different strategies presented. All right, so let's get into some, um, some math, okay? So if I have the problem, um, let's say 26,419 plus 32,597. All right, and I am told to estimate the sum. Remember, the sum is the, the answer to an addition problem. So a problem doesn't even have to give me this plus sign. It could just say, estimate the sum of 26,419 and 32,597. And I would need to know that that vocabulary word sum means that I'm trying to add, okay, uh, to an addition. All right write this down so that way we have it. Um, all right, so I'm going to estimate the sum. Now, the traditional way of estimating would be to use rounding, and we're going to round to help us. Now, here's the thing. 
you can round to any place value. You just want to round to the same place value with both of the add-ins. The add-ins are the two numbers that we're adding together. All right, so if I round this one to the nearest hundreds, I'm going to round this one to the nearest hundreds. If I round this one to the nearest thousands, I want to round this one to the nearest thousands. All right, so it doesn't matter what place value you round to unless you're specifically told to round to a certain place, but you want to round it to the same place with both numbers. Sometimes you'll see problems where it's like a, a multi-select answer where there's multiple right answers and it would say to select all of the different possible ways that you could estimate or all of the different possible sums that you could find when estimating. So you might want to round this to the nearest 10 and then round it to the nearest 100 and then round it to the nearest 1,000 and then round it to the nearest 10,000. So there would be four different possibilities for your answers, okay? So when I'm looking at this, I'm going to just show you um, two different examples. I'm going to round to the nearest thousand and the nearest 10,000. Usually that's what we would do, especially for a mental math strategy. Okay, so if I'm looking at this, I'm going to round to the nearest thousand first. All right, so the four tells the six what to do. So the four tells the six to stay a six. So it would be 26,000 plus, and then my five tells my two to turn to a three, so 33. And if you're having trouble with rounding, go back to the rounding video from the last unit, and that's going to help you with some different rounding strategies, okay? I'm not going to go over that in this video. All right, so now I'm adding 26,000 plus 33,000. Well, I could do that in my head, or I could stack my numbers. And you guys see I'm using grid paper. And one thing I see a common mistake students make when they are adding and subtracting um, is just not lining the numbers up properly. So if you have a hard time, your handwriting's maybe a little bit sloppy, you have a hard time lining the numbers up properly, grid paper can be really helpful for that because you can, you know, put the numbers into the grids and, and do it that way, all right? Um, so plus 33,000, and then I'm just going to have 0, 0, 0, right? I'm adding 0, 0 plus 0, 0. 6 plus 3 is 9, and um, three, 2 plus 3 is 5. So one rounded possibility or one estimation of this, my answer is going to be about 59,000, okay? And again, now I can round them to the nearest um, 10,000. So the 6 tells the 3, or the 2 to become a 3. I'm just going to write it over here. And the two tells the three to stay a three. Well, this one, I don't even have to necessarily write out. I could add 30,000 plus 30,000 very easily in my head, and it would be about 60,000. Now you notice my estimations are very close to each other, and that's a good thing. You, they should be close to each other. Um, and one thing that estimating can help us do is then to check, but you know, we, I can do this really quick in my head, right? I can say, okay, this is about 30,000, this is about 30,000, 30,000 plus 30,000 is 60,000. So my answer should be close to 60,000. And then when I actually add, I can use that to check myself. Did I get an answer that was close to 60,000? If I'm way off, like let's say I got 42,000 something when I added, I made a mistake someplace. Maybe I forgot to regroup or maybe, um, you know, I wrote the wrong numbers down or something like that. Um, but if I do get an answer that's close to 60,000, I'm like, okay, then I am more likely to have the right answer. All right, so that's kind of another way that estimating can help us. All right, so let's do an example of estimation where we are finding the answer to a subtraction problem because you are doing this with addition and subtraction. All right, so um, let's say I'm going to do 43,697 minus 21,400. Two. And remember, with subtraction, we're finding the difference. So this is one word that you're going to see a lot. And what I see students do is not know what difference means. You're like, oh, well, this number is bigger than the other number. And traditionally, that would be what, uh, you know, you're finding how are the numbers different. However, in, so in math, the word difference means the answer to a subtraction problem. All right, when you are subtracting, you're finding, well, how are those numbers? How much different are those numbers? Okay, so it is kind of the same thing. It's just a different way of thinking about it. Well, how much different are they? The only way I can find that out is to subtract to see how much space there is in between the two numbers. All right, so difference is the answer to subtraction. All right, so again, 
I'm going to use rounding. That's going to be my first strategy. All right. And when I'm looking at this problem, I'm going to round. I'm just going to do it with rounding to the nearest thousands this time. Um, just for the sake of time, I don't want this video to be too long. Okay. So um, I'm looking at this. This is going to be 44,000 minus, okay, that four tells that one to stay the same, 21,000. And then I get my answer. And I got 23,000. The answer would be about 23,000 when I find the difference. Okay. So now again, when you are told to estimate, you have to actually estimate. Okay. If you are told to estimate and you give the actual answer, you haven't followed the directions. And so you may have the correct actual answer but the directions told you to estimate. So it's really, really important that you're paying attention to that. If you're told to estimate or if you're told to find out about how many or about what about what, what is the difference or approximately what is the difference, you are being told to estimate, okay? So please make sure that you're reading those directions carefully because I do see students get frustrated with that as well, where it's like, oh, well, I have the right answer, you know, but the reality is, you didn't follow the directions and you have to follow the directions as well. All right, now we're gonna look really carefully at another mental math strategy. And this strategy is a little bit complicated, um, but it's called compensation, okay? This is one of the mental math strategies that you see in your book. I'm gonna do it with some smaller numbers and you usually see it with some smaller numbers as well, okay? So let's say I have 47 plus 36. All right, and I'm gonna use the compensation strategy to add. What you're basically doing with compensation is you're making the numbers easier to work with so that you can do it in your head, all right? I may be able to do 47 plus 36 in my head, but when I'm doing it, I'm actually using strategies a lot like compensation. So I'm not necessarily saying, well, six plus seven is 13, regroup the one, four plus one plus three is eight. I'm not necessarily doing it that way, okay? Um, some people do, but what I do is I'm like, well, 47 is really close to 50. So let me add 50 plus this. And then, okay, well, I added three extra, so I'm gonna take the three extra away. That's actually what compensation is. You're making the numbers easier to work with. So what you're going to do is you're going to pick one number and you're going to round it. That's, that's basically it. You're picking one number and rounding it. I'm going to go with 47. 47 is really close to 50. So I'm doing 50 plus 36. All right. Well, that's easy. 50 plus 36, I can do that in my head. That equals 86. But that's not the answer to the problem because this number wasn't 50, right? This number, and by the way, this is, this is not an estimation strategy. I'm not sure if I said that. This is a mental math strategy, okay? So estimation is a way that you can do mental math. This is an actual mental math strategy where you are finding the actual answer to the problem, okay? All right, so back to what I said. Now, what did I do to get from the 47 to the 50? Well, I added three, right? So because I added three here, I have to take away the three from the answer I got, and that's 83, and that's my actual answer. Now, again, because I'm writing all this out, it's like, well, this is long. I could have just stacked the numbers, added them, regrouped, and that would have been easier. But again, this is a mental math strategy. So the idea is that you practice it on paper so then when you are doing math in your head you know how to do it in your head um, and with any mental math strategies most of the time it's because we have learned how to do that math on paper so now we can do it in our head okay and if you're like at the store and you're really quickly needing to add something this may be a really good strategy for you to use because okay well i'm i'm reworking the numbers to make them easier for me to do them in my head some people like i said prefer to stack the numbers, regroup, and add. And they can do that in their head effectively. Fine, that's great. Again, this is just a strategy that you can use. So let me give you one more example of this strategy. All right, um, and essentially what you're thinking is you're rounding one of the numbers, and then whatever you did to round it at the beginning, you have to undo at the end, okay? So let's do it with some bigger numbers. Let's say I have 526 plus 300, um, 51. 
All right, 526 plus 351. Well, maybe I'm going to round 526 to what's pretty close to 530. And then let's say I can do it with both numbers. I just have to really pay attention to what I'm doing. Okay, um, but I'm going to leave 351 as it is. Okay, well, now again, pretty easy for me to add in my head. I have um, 5 plus 3 is 8, 3 plus 5 is 8, 3, 0 plus 1 is uh, 1. All right, well, what did I do to get here? I added 4, so now I need to subtract 4, and I'm not opposed to using my fingers, so if I had 81, and then I know my 8's going to stay at 8, 81, 80, 79, 78. 77. All right. So 877 would be my actual answer. Again, compensation is kind of a weird strategy. I absolutely get that. If this is not the way your brain works, that's okay. Just remember whatever you do to it to round it, you have to undo here. So if I add four here when I'm rounding, I subtract four here. If I um, subtracted, like let's say I rounded down, maybe I went 350 here, for example. Okay, well, I took away one. I would have to add one at the end. So you're doing the opposite operation at the end. Okay, that's what the compensation strategy is. If you have any questions about it, please let me know. I'm more than happy to help out and I will put some other videos into our math board for you guys to look at um, if you need some extra help with compensation. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up our video for today. So again, we went over estimation and estimations where you're using rounding. The key is to make sure you're rounding to the same place in both numbers. So if you round to the tens in one number, you round to the tens in the other number. All right, again, if you're having trouble with rounding still, go back and check out that video that we um, did in the last unit on rounding, and that will help you out. Using a number line is a great way to round. All right, and then compensation, you're just making the numbers easier to work with so that you can do the math in your head. Um, but right now, because you're just learning compensation, you're writing it out, but eventually it might be a strategy that you would use as a mental math strategy. And I have observed students doing compensation in their head, and I've, I've done forms of compensation in my head for mental math as well. So it's kind of weird to look at it all written out and like be taught it, but eventually it may be something that you just kind of do naturally. All right. So anyway, if you guys have any questions, please let um, me know. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And this um, video is going to go with a couple of your different um, units. It's linked on the board so you can see which lessons it goes with because I did go over a couple of different lessons worth of strategies. So you can go through and do two lessons today if you want to go ahead and knock both of them out or if you want to keep doing it with one lesson a day, this video will go with both lessons. Okay, so anyway, have a great rest of your day guys and I'll see you next time.